Good morning, or nearly afternoon. It's a cloudy, dreary day. pressure washer out driver's going down through our we're knocking all the old loose paint off this trailer and cleaning up the steel where we welded it on there and uh, getting it prepped for paint we're wanting to paint this trailer going to paint it black I wanted to really paint it a different color but we couldn't really come to an agreement on what color of paint we wanted but gonna have a black trailer and gonna paint the wheels gray is what we settled on old trailer's looking a lot different from the from the trailer we bought but uh, we're knocking this loose paint off where it'll paint good we're not going for no professional job on this trailer and we're gonna try to do the best job that we can but i ain't gonna get super super meticulous on the paint of this trailer it's more for us than anything just to make it look a little better make it look a little decent good morning january the 6th and as you can tell it is snowing this is very unusual because this is the second snow in the six days of january that we've had we had a little light dusting I snow the first of January or the second one. And now we got this other snow. And they said it's supposed to do this all day up to one to three inches. So we'll see what happens. I got my truck running because I don't want to be cold when they get, get back in it. Trying to keep my floor clean. If you want to see the most unprofessional job of painting you've ever seen, by golly, right here she is. decided to show back up to work. We wave at everybody, corn dog.
I want to make the next batch just a hair thicker. Put too much producer in it. Yeah. I mean, it's painting good, but it's just not gonna mess here. Well, we are dressing up our trailer a little bit. Um, we got this reflective tape on that on here that we're putting on here. Uh, that's to help people see you a little better, especially at night time. Uh, we're back here putting our LED lights in. We uh, we've got an issue. We've got tail lights on this side, but the blanker is dim and no brake light on this side. And then on this side, everything's working like it should be. So I think we're gonna go get some new wire and just rewire it. I was diagnosing stuff with the uh, with my test light and my old test light crapped out on me, which I've had it a long, long time. I think that's the original I think that's the original test light I bought when I started farming. So, I mean, <laughs> and that's been 10 years. So what we're doing, we're running this uh, reflective tape about every three foot. And then, or actually what we're doing, we'll, we'll hit two, two of these standards and go down it. And then we'll skip three and run two. And I mean, it's mostly so people that can see you. And I think technically you're supposed to have it for the DOT, but I, we're not too worried about that. This trailer ain't gonna get far from home, but uh, it does make it look a little better instead of just plain black. So we're fixing to put the last of the uh, fixing to put the last of it on. Okay, so what we normally do is we just uh, kind of just measure it out by hand. Nothing scientific. Measure it out by hand and just take my pocket knife and cut it. Come back to him in a little bit. I'll get the Get the end of the tape started. It can be a booger sometimes. There we go. All right. Now I'll get the end, hold to the end of that. Robert will stretch it tight where he wants it. We'll kind of get it into position. I'll initially stick it, and then I'll take my hand and just follow follow the tape as I pull it off and hold hold steady pressure on it where it'll stick. I went on and put a strip down the bottom of my toolbox there. Lights test one or test two, three, probably about test five. We finally discovered our wiring issue. That's a right blinker. That's a left blinker. Turn on some running lights. All right, do your brakes. Yes, sir. All right. Finally. But the flashers. <laughs>
If the blankers is working, the flasher should be working. In theory. So guys, here was the issue. This was the issue. We had to replace this. But now she's doing good. We had to uh, we had to grind the old bolts off. I was rusted up. And I nicked my paint, but we're not gonna worry about that. Hey, oh, I would I would do it. No, let me do it. That's gonna be gonna be mighty nice. We went. What you be quiet a minute? We got her painted, got her lights working, got a reflective tape on, and we got went and picked her tanks up. I can't wait. <laughs> well, I can wait, but I'm hoping this spraying this year is going to be a lot more enjoyable. Well, we've got here. We went to co-op and picked our tanks up. We got two 1500 gallon, what's called vertical tanks or flat bottom tanks. Um, a lot of people are running elliptical tanks or leg tanks, just whatever you want to call it, that, uh, more of a horizontal type tank. And they're really nice, but they are expensive, like double the cost of what these tanks right here cost and these tanks are a lot more affordable and there are several people around in the area that has gone to this style of tanks and are using them on their water trailers and they're working out fine but what we're gonna have to do we're gonna have to get these tanks into position and then we'll get us some angle iron and uh i don't think it's still we put down it's gonna be thick enough to hold it but it might be i don't know we gotta make that this judgment call but we'll either tack the angle iron here and, or bolt it down so that our tanks ain't trying to slide back and forth and then we'll strap them down good and uh we'll be ready to do that there are going to be two 1500 gallons here and then we've got a 750 gallon tank i think we're going to say it behind these and we'll have five fill ups for a sprayer i think i just run across a deal on a two inch hose reel fingers crossed on that uh, we can get that bought that'll be nice that's not something i was planning on but uh my cousin called me they found out i was building a water trailer they're converting theirs to three inch and they told me they would make me a deal on the two inch hose reel so we fixing to go see about that tomorrow get that deal done and hopefully we'll have us an electric hose reel to go on here so say something nutty so do you wrap the tank that even in con and that you know folks Hey, Make sure your fingers ain't the screen. Is the fingers in the screen? No. In. Right. So I had some people ask me why we run single axle trucks versus um. What why we run single axle trucks versus tandem axle trucks? Okay. And a lot of that's got to do with the cost of the trucks. You can buy a single axle truck for roughly half of what a tandem axle truck costs. Because there just ain't a lot of demand for uh, single axle trucks when these companies get uh, get done with them. So you can buy them relatively cheap. Uh, one thing I like about them, you got a tighter turning radius. And uh, one thing you need to make sure of uh, when you're buying a single axle truck is make sure the back axle is heavy enough to handle the load. You got to have a, a single axle truck typically has a heavier axle underneath it than the tandem axle trucks because the two axles are sharing the load on a tandem axle truck. But uh, 
that and uh, tight turning radius and we've got a lot of fields that's hard to get into and that's one reason uh, that's reason one reason we run shorter hopper bottoms you can get in a lot tighter places I mean our 32 foot trailer we can haul about 900 bushel and I figure we can haul about 900 bushel with this 30 foot it's not as long but it's got a deeper deeper hopper and we can buy some cheaper tags typically the max wheel gross uh, coming across the scales is 75,000 pounds and we can buy some lighter tags uh, instead of 80,000 pound tags we can buy some lighter tags and cheapen the cost of running the truck up a little bit any other reasons we run single axle trucks <laughs> probably one of the biggest reasons is we just like them <laughs> so so Dylan wanted me to do a little comparison between the two hopper bottoms and this is a 30 foot jet hopper bottom and according to the jet website it'll hold about the same as our 32 foot and the main reason is right here this is one big basically one big hopper with a divider down the center and we'll I'll climb up there and show you on our other trailer it's got the divider but instead of being open down here it's got the hopper it's got like a separate hopper coming down here to the door so it like slants down to the door here and it does that on the front and the back so you get lots of bushels right in there a lot more capacity and we'll climb up there and look it's still got a little little slope to it but not like on ours and i think it's a lot deeper your hoppers are a lot deeper i know on ours it's it starts sloping right up here at the top it ain't th down that far like like this one is it starts sloping way up here and it's got more slope to it and this one they got deeper hoppers on it so i think that's where your adder added extra capacity is we'll walk down here and look at our other all right here we are down here at our original 32 foot and you can see down here on the hoppers here how it's got this slant right here you know on the jet it was all filled in right here and it just had like maybe the slope started right here but you can see how many more bushels you can get right in here so i'm saying that's where your extra capacity is coming from but we'll climb up here in the actual hoppers and as you can see up here how on the jet it started it started sloping way probably down in here see it's starting to slope up here at this at the tarp 